So, is his behavior the next day innocent? Or is he trying to cover up what he's done? I think that's subject to opinion and there are two ways of looking at it. Does he know what he's done and he's trying to butter her up? Or is he genuinely being kind and getting her a coffee because they've spent the night together, in his head, and had a great time? That's what is great about this storyline, it's going to get people talking. It's not through one person's perspective. It's up to you what you make of it. Copyright BBC Alistair Heplusi mentioned last year that this story divided the team at Casualty and would probably divide the audience as well. Do you agree? Yes, definitely. I think for the first few episodes after and before Alicia finally says what happened in her opinion it definitely will. Until then, we are literally basing any opinions on the way she is acting, the way he is acting and anything they do say to each other, which isn't a lot in terms of the discussion of that night. So yes, up to that point, I think it will divide opinion. Eventually we will find out more though, and see a bit more, and I think that's when think opinions will be more clear cut. But until then, it's very much, who do you believe, advertisement, continue reading below how do you expect viewers to react to Eddie? Do you reckon there could be some people taking his side, well the only backlash here really gets is Alicia being cold towards him. I don't know that anyone should feel sorry for him, but maybe I'm being biased. However, I do think some people will possibly think, is she being harsh on this guy, because we only know what happened from what she is saying and the way it's affecting her directly. That said, I don't think anyone could look at Alicia, and how distraught she is emotionally and physically, and think that what she is saying happened, didn't happen, how is Alicia going to cope with seeing Eddie at work every day, it's going to be very difficult and I think it completely panics her. What's happened is distressing enough, but you, can't imagine then seeing the person at work every single day. It's very distracting, and I also, think, the way he is acting afterwards makes her self-doubt creep in even more so, copyright BBC CA and you tell us much about the aftermath. Is she going to confide in anyone? Yes, but it takes her a long time to tell anyone and that's what the next episodes are going to be exploring. I think the audience are going to be screaming, please tell somebody. But we had to make it authentic and from the research we've done, we've learned that there are lots of people who don't tell anybody and who never tell anybody because they think it's easier to pretend it never happened, obviously, once you do, it opens so many doors and people who are going to want to help you, but it's a case of, does she want that help? That's what the next few episodes are going to explore, is she going to tell somebody, and who is she going to tell? I think the audience would love her to tell Ethan because he's such a nice guy and they know he will be understanding. But as you'll see at the end of the next episode, it's a lot more complicated than that and it's not that easy to just tell someone, does this mean that she's going to keep it to herself for a while? Yes, for quite a while. I think it's important we didn't just have her reveal it after one episode. Again, from the research we've done, we learned that some people never tell anyone, and if they do, it can take years and years of that internal dialogue of, do I even want to go there, it's going to change her as well. We are going to see her grow up. She's going to be less naive and she'll start taking herself more seriously. It propels her to want to strive for better in her own life as well, where does this leave her and Ethan? Can you see a future for them? I don't think that's even on her radar at this moment in time. I think when she is dealing with it, it's very much just about that. You'll see in the next episode that he is who she wants to tell the most because he is the person she has the most history with at work. He's a comfort and he's so lovely. But I don't think getting back together at this stage is something she is considering. just not on her radar, would you like to see them back together eventually? It's clearly what the fans want, obviously I want a happy ending for Alicia. When you play a character for so long, it's always nice. And also for Ethan too as he's not had the best year ever.
So yes, it would definitely be nice for them to have some happiness. Copyright BBC Alistair Hep and a lighter note, huge congratulations on the BAFTA. What has the atmosphere been like on set since the win? Everyone is just so humbled because Casualty hasn't won for about 12 years I think. After 12 ceremonies of being told no, you kind of just assume it won't go to you. Even though we won the NTA, which was also a big surprise, we were still just genuinely shocked, and I think you could tell that from our reactions on the night. We were clapping for what we thought was going to be Coronation Street as we heard the C, and then we were like, it's used, I'm just so proud of everyone who has worked. on the show for so long and that they are finally getting recognition, the writers, production team, and the cast and crew who have been doing it for so long. Obviously I'm biased but I think this show is great and I know how much passion and hard work goes into it. I am just really chuffed for everybody, do you ever see yourself going back to Emmerdale? Right now, I'm very happy just being here at Casualty and doing this storyline. So not for now but I did see all the Emmerdale cast at the BAFTAs which was really nice. I miss them so much and I've still got so many friends there. But yeah, I am here for now, do you feel like you made the right choice to leave Emmerdale when you did? Yes, definitely. You leave acting jobs for new challenges and I did a couple of plays afterwards, which was amazing. I didn't go to drama school so any job I get, I am learning on the job. Having that experience was great, and then joining Casualty was a whole new challenge, playing an emergency doctor every day is challenging with all the medical stuff we have to do and then getting to do stuff like this storyline makes me realize why you do move on from jobs. It's nothing to do with the job itself, and I absolutely loved Emmerdale and I love Casualty as well, it's never to do with the job itself. The people are always so nice and it's so hard to go, but it's a career choice so you can move on and be challenged. Casualty continues on Saturday June 2nd on BBC One. Rape Crisis England and Wales works towards the elimination of all forms of sexual violence and sexual misconduct. If you've been affected by the issues raised in this story, you can access more information on their website or by calling the National Rape Crisis Helpline on 0808-802-9999. Rape Crisis Scotland's helpline number is 0808-801-0302. Readers in the U.S. are encouraged to contact RAIN or the National Sexual Assault Hotline on 800-656-4673. Read more news, spoilers and gossip on... Our casualty homepage went up to the minute soaps news, spoilers and gossip on your social feeds. Just hit like on our Digital Spy Soaps Facebook page and follow on our Soap Scoop Twitter account.